Hello, everyone. Uh, our next speaker is Elchpieta Godlevska. She has been working for promoting open source communities for more than 15 years. She has been working with Linux professionals for uh, improving and optimizing their Linux skills. And she'll talk more about post communities from passion to profession. The word is yours. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Um, hello. Uh, you can hear me, right? Okay. Sorry, I don't speak Bulgarian. So I hope it is fine English. But I have seen that you people have very good level of English, so I think it not, will not be a problem. Uh, so my name is Elz Bieta. Um, I'm from the Linux Professional Institute. I will tell you a little bit, a little bit more later what uh, my organization is doing. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy to be here. It's my, my first time in, in, at this event and my first time in Sofia and in Bulgaria. So it's a very important uh, event for me. So I'm happy to see you here. Uh, maybe to start, uh, do you know Linux Professional Institute? Yeah. I met a lot of people who actually have uh, LPI certification and I'm very glad to, 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 to see this. So let's start. I am here today to talk about FOSS communities, uh, communities of people like you, you know, people working together on a common project, and uh, how to transform a passion into a profession. So maybe to start, uh, probably you know, because you are professionals and you are a community of, of uh, open source enthusiasts, so you know what FOSS is. It's free and open source software. And uh, well, maybe just quickly going through freedom for freedoms, which define the FOSS. And free is not what many people think, free of charge. Like, like it's not, you know, for free. It's free because it's freedom to run the program as we wish. Freedom to study how the program works and change it if we want to do this. And freedom to redistribute copies and to distribute the copies of our modified version. So that's the freedom, the four freedoms we are talking about. And the open in this uh, force is a more technical aspect. It's referring to the open source. So free. Many times you can hear free and libre. Libre is just to make the difference because free is refers to the freedom we have just spoken about and not about the price. Could be, but it doesn't have to be. So that's why sometimes false we can see flaws, free, libre, and open source software. And actually, it's a bit, a bit of movement because. Uh, one is free and liberal software movement, which is more, let's say, more political, ide ide ideological, and open source movement, which is more related to the technical aspect. And community are people like, like you. We are all here in a, in a community event. And community, what, what does it mean? It's sharing or having uh, passions, interests in common. So those are just example, very few example of examples of communities I would like to mention. And there are really many, many, many of them. And you here probably could tell much more. I just wanted to show the, 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 the different communities and how they work. It's like Parrot OS, born in Cuba. I don't know if you have heard about this. It's related to security, group of people, group of professionals working with security. So they just uh, work together to, to, to create a common set of tools to make the, more, uh, the work easier, standardized, and more secure. So the Parrot OS uh, is the flagship product of Parrot uh, security. It's based on, on Debian. And uh, so that's the, the group of people working around this particular project. Liber Office, that's true that uh, nowadays uh, people like have uh, work more with, uh, with online tools, but still Liber Office is a very good example of a community that people working together 
and volunteers, actually, all of them. Testers, testers, translators, locators, uh, and other kind of volunteers uh, that work together to develop this office package. And the office package, uh, although we, we use more online, as I just said, in, uh, in many developing countries mostly, is still very much used. And it's also another typical example of a community. DevOps. It's another great example. <laughs> Actually, uh, it was uh, the first community that uh, started uh, remote work even before the pandemic. And uh, DevOps actually exists for many, many years, but the term DevOps really started, uh, I don't know, several years ago. And it's a very uh, fast growing community. Uh, probably you, but you have here also DevOps days and all over the world. So it's a group of people um, actually meeting and working together to develop those tools that make uh, uh, the work of IT professional easier and work of many companies uh, much easier. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, Linux Professional uh, Institute worked with the DevOps community <coughs> when we developed a new exam for DevOps tools, so we uh, had exams all over the world, the so-called beta exams for free, just to test the exam if it's good, if it covers all topics related to DevOps. So it's um, just another example of how, how the community could work together for a common, common good. And now a little bit about the Linux Professional Institute, because I represent the, 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 the Linux Professional Institute. So I have to talk about uh, our community, actually, because we are known as um, exam and certification provider. Uh, you probably he heard about LPIC, LPIC 1, LPIC 2, 3 for system administrators. But many people uh, don't know what we do uh, apart from the certification. Uh, LPI is also a community, and we are, let's say, on more th for more than, more, more than 20 years working with uh, uh, Linux professionals and IT professionals in general, general to, to, to just do things that could help the community in impro improving the skills and finding career or changing career or just finding a new set of skills. Um, this is um, just explain you a little bit more um, about the LP LP LPI certifications. So on one hand, we have open technology, which is not exactly Linux, but if, as you can see, DevOps. The most all, all of all, maybe not all of tools, but but uh, majority of tools are are Linux tools within DevOps and uh, BSD. Also, we developed several years ago, this new certification, it's a, a track which is a little bit apart. Because then, uh, down, down, you can see essentials. Essentials uh, is the, is more or less new <coughs> exam developed also several years ago by, 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 by LP, LPI. That's because there was a need on the market for really basic skills and for testing basic skills for people um, beginning uh, education, beginning uh, uh, as professionals in Linux. So it's like Linux essentials, it's to know the, the, the command line, to know what the, the Linux is about, what are the different distributions, different, uh, different uh, applications, and also to understand the concept about the um, the open source in general. And then web development essentials is uh, has one year, more or less. It's uh, recently released. It's for, for web development, but also very basic level. And then we uh, come to the LPIC <laughs> 1, 2, 3. That's the first and most, most known certification program from LPI. Uh, more than 20 years ago, that's why uh, LPI was created, because uh, let's say a group of companies came to, came to us and just said, we need a standard in Linux education. 
So when we hire people or when, when we look for, you know, for, for, for people or for experts, we need to know what um, set of skills they, they, they have because, okay, it's, oh, it can be checked, sure, you can see it and, and show whatever you, what, whatever you know on Linux, but when you come and you show us that you have this standard, so we know for sure that you are this, this person, you know, knowing this from Linux. That's how we started to develop the, the exams. So LPIC 1 is the level for, syst uh, for system administrator on level uh, junior. It's like more or less one, two years experience. And then uh, if you pass the exam, you get certification and you want to go to the next level. So you can uh, take the LPIC 2, which is si still system administration, but then um, level seniors, three, four years experience. And then LPIC, you have four signs, that's because LPIC 3, it's uh, required to pass one of four exams to get the certification LPIC 3. And those are really, really advanced and uh, you can see the topics. So it's uh, either security or virtualization or high availability. So it's depending on the, on the specializa specialization you want to choose. And there is no higher. Than, than LPIC 3. And actually, uh, it's very difficult to, to find really advanced, uh, so advanced skilled people in Linux, but because many times also, also the companies, they look for, for specialists in such area, and so, so they look, they, they even contact us, see, I'm looking for people with LPIC 3 because I know he's a security expert or he's expert in virtualization. So that's why it's good to have and to show, okay, look, I, I have this, I know this. And also, it's a very good start because sometimes, sometimes people ask, "Okay, but uh, why do I need uh, this if I have? Uh, I can take Red Hat. I will work on Red Hat. Okay, if you will work on Red Hat, that's perfect. But if you have LPIC first, it will, will be much easier to take another specific uh, certification for specific technology. On many, many times, even before people from Red Hat or IBM, be, be, before they send for, you know, for additional training or certification, they always look because they know it's easier to train a person with uh, LPIC, which is general knowledge of Linux, than person that has no idea about the Linux. So that's the reason, and that's why also we work with all those companies, because it's more or less complementary. <coughs> as we are still developing, as the market uh, um, you know, goes forward, and so we need to listen to the market. So that's why we are working on the new programs. Uh, those two, you can see here, Security Essentials and IoT Essentials, uh, will be released very, very soon. And it also because security, we were talking about LPIC 3, there is one specialization, security, but it's really very, very advanced. But then uh, this program is more beginner, but still it's security in Linux. And the same IoT. IoT is uh, actually a niche. It's a very good program with a lot of future because of those small components for, for hardware are on, on Linux. So it will be also a very good uh, curriculum to if you want to speci specialize in Internet of Things. <coughs> Why we are talking about the community? Because then first LPI started as uh, a certification provider. We were building exams and then certifying people. And then three years ago, or four years ago now, uh, so we launched a membership programs so actually any people certified can become members of LPI. So why it's important or why should people consider becoming members? Because they, uh, they get, the, the name is Professional Development Unit, so they get points and so with those points uh, people can get um, update on certification without going to exam, which is very important. And uh, so the volunteer experience count to get extra points and, uh, and working for community, Linux open source community gives extra point, points too. 
So, and the members can choose, I think I talk about this later, the, the members of LPI can choose the board of directors, can be part of committees, different committee, committees, and to get this consent certification and, and ha have access also, also to, to tutorials, which are only for members, and uh, learning materials for members. So actually this membership program is also an example of a community because we are all community of people around LPI. Um, and uh, we do have um, uh, programs and projects for, vo for volunteers. And that's why we call this uh, LPI community. That's because we work with people who, who volunteer to be with us and, you know, actually work for the, 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 the open source community all over the world working with us. It's just a way to contribute. So, for example, um, on LPI blog, you can see different posts and different publications from people. And they are actually volunteers. It's because they want to tell their story. So we work with them and so we publish the story, how they did to to improve skills or, or people how they got a new or better job because of the education in Linux. So those are really interesting stories. We like to share them. That's to be more closer maybe to the people. It's not like we are some guys sitting there but in Canada in our headquarter or in other offices and we just think, okay, let's do this, that. No, we, we you know we just work with people, like normal people like like all of you. So everyone can 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 get um, Post and article on our on our blog. Uh, Boost buddies, mm, like the events, and we do lo a lot of events. So at the events we count on volunteers to help us because we are a very small team. So I'm alone here today, but I have someone helping me. It's a person from 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 here from Bulgaria. Uh, he will be. Uh, he actually will provide the workshop uh, tomorrow on Linux Essentials. So the people like, like that are very important to us because uh, being a small team, so we cannot be, you know, uh, it's quite difficult. So we always have people working, uh, helping us at, um, at the booth at the events. Yeah, you can just see events. Uh, we have been from, from the beginning of the year to like the first part, part of the year all over the world in all continents. Also translations. Translations is a very, very important part because we need translators to, oh, for, the web, to the web, for the website, for the exams and learning materials. So this way uh, it's created all in English. So we need then people to work with and so to get the content in, in Bulgarian, in Polish, in, in Czech and uh, Chinese, in all language possible. So many of those people, they are just volunteers. They do this and they are uh, listed on our website as volunteers and helping, uh, helping us with the translations. So now our exams right now are, are, are available in English, German, Japanese, Portuguese, Chinese, Dutch, and Spanish. Uh, Linux Essentials is available in Polish too, and in some other languages, because it's probably the, the, the level which is uh, less complicated to translate. And uh, as I said, also the the website is available in different languages and learning materials. We also we work on translations into different languages, even if English is not a problem. But actually, some people prefer the the own uh, the own language is and also it is to 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 show that we are an international community because if everything is in English, so it's like but come on, you say you are international, and it's all in English. So it's why it's important for us to. And exam development, <laughs> it's a very good example of how we work with the community. Because the exams, it's, it's the same. It's not like a group of people, OK, let's put this and that into this exam. And here we have the exam. And so let people, will, they will pass or not. Uh, it's not. It's a very complicated process. So all the exams, exams I mentioned, there is first the first draft, OK but with participation of experts from different countries, from companies, from community, from companies, of course, because it's important, because the people, like the business people, they know which skills are needed to do the job. 
in, in Linux. So we get output from all those people. So we prepare the first draft of the exam and then we send for, for public consultation. So anyone can, can register and be a part of this process. You can just uh, send the email and I would like to be a part of, of the development process. So you will get the, the draft and you can make your, your, give the feedback, you can make suggestions, you can say, no, I think this, uh, this no, doesn't make sense. I think we should put into this new exam, let's say IoT, this technology or that, these I don't components because these these are important. So we we hear to the community, and so so after this, we do beta exams. So beta exam is the free exam. Um, we try to do maybe not in all the countries, just in the countries we have more facilities. Like if we have a partner, a training company or a school in Bulgaria, so we would be happy to do this in Bulgaria because we just need real people. This cannot be on, on paper. So if you have a group of people like 10, 12, and they see it, okay, I would like to take this exam. If I pass, I get the certification. If I don't pass, no, not a problem at all because I didn't pay for it. But the most important thing, that's why we do this in person, that we need the feedback. So on the exam, okay, it was good, it was difficult, it, uh, uh, it sucks, whatever, but just for us to know. And so we can improve this. And so after the beta exams, we launch the final version of, of the exam. So sometimes it just takes years to, to, to have a new exam. It's not, uh, not an easy process. But we do this all together with, uh, with volunteers. Uh, learning materials, <coughs> it's more or less the same, but it's, uh, it, it's right, it's created in English, and we have a group of people writing. And um, that's because um, until a couple of years, we only worked with publishers publishers from outside it's just uh, some some providers they do everything they give like pack training learning materials exams certification everything but we just wanted to, to work with publishers and with different people and anyone could write a book about uh, how to take a exam but then we decided to make it easier just to to have our own materials so now uh, the learning materials to prepare to to to, to the exams are available for free. Many are already available in different languages than English. And it's the same. So we work with volunteers on, on that. So just people, either partners or, or community members, they just help with the translation. So they're just some people happy who is working with us. So, so those people, they, they share their stories. They are, we mentioned them on, on social media, we mentioned them on website, and they go for events sometimes with us and get uh, new contacts, business contacts, new work many times. Uh, it's actually very nice because I can remember in, in, in Poland at one of the, of the events, a community member came to me and said, no, thank you, thank you very much because, because of you, or because of LPI, I got a new job. It's because of one of the offers we published and he took exam and uh, took, got certification. So those are very, very nice moments and it's the same when people share their stories. And now going to the point, um, how could we learn with force communities and turn the passion into into a profession because being volunteer is nice but we all need to you know to get money somehow so i will just give you this example of you know this guy right the, the linux torvars so it started uh, he was you know, in in the school very very young age so he started because he was bored and you know, so he just in invented this so he created this this new operating system and so actually when we had he went to the university he, al he already knew much more than 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 his his teachers his professors and that's how it started so he didn't even imagine at that time that, that, that Linux would give a job to millions of people all over the world. It was just a hobby. But so you can see what, what, what is happening now with his hobby. So you can see <coughs> that's the report from, from last year from the Linux Foundation on open source jobs. So but I will not read all this, but it, just to tell you that, that open source jobs are really in demand. And the demand is growing every year. 
even during the pandemic, it stopped, but it stopped like all over, not only in open source sector, but uh, but it's still one of the the, the, the 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 areas of the future. As you can see, also we, we made a lot of research, the Linux Foundation and CompTIA and Pearson View, all the research <coughs> researches say the same that that the companies and and high you know the the recruiters they they really look for people because nowadays open source is 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 everywhere so it's not like many times uh, when you talk about linux i linux i have linux on my computer but it's not only about the computer it's about all the jobs you know behind so how to start but you all know GitHub, GitLab. So you know the can candidates in in IT. So it doesn't. It's, it no no one is looking on on the resume like traditional way. So you just need to create a, create a, a account on one of those re repositories and others, and so you show your projects or show what you know. And the example of open source projects. So it's very important to, to keep, keep uh, track of that projects from the list, and there are many, many, many others. And um, DevOps is a very important and really growing um, direction, I would say. And uh, so just uh, to tell you that it's not only ICT, so it's, uh, I had a conversation with someone earlier, also it's it's not, sometimes people cannot even imagine, so because it, like IT is everywhere, it's not about the computer itself, it's in medicine, uh, pharmacy, all other sectors using this. Um, Okay, do we have any questions for our speaker? Uh, you can use the microphone, don't be shy. Anyone? Nope. <laughs> Everything is clear. I guess. Hey there. Please. Quick question. I, s I was just going through your website. So no, no ongoing partnerships with other certification bodies, and uh, usually this is how it works. Uh, do you plan any? You have the DevOps Institute, you have uh, QC Institute, you have plenty of bodies in the area. So do you plan shared certification co uh, or uh, recognition of uh, one certification with another, uh, with another organization? But you mean other organization, other certification yeah. bodies? Yeah. Uh, like... Uh, let's say DevOps Institute. Like? Like DevOps Institute, let's, no. let's say that. And not, no, we don't have partnership itself. We did have, just to give an example, with OpenSUSE at yeah. some point and with CompTIA about, uh, for someone, for example, who passed uh, our uh, Linux, uh, Lino, Linux, um, li no, someone who passed CompTIA Linux Plus uh, could get also uh, our LPIC 1. Okay. And with OpenSUSE until uh, before the pandemic, we also had uh, that uh, we could, someone who passed CLA, I, I think it was, CLA and LPIC one, so they could, uh, in one, they could have two certifications. Okay. Uh, it's th I cannot <laughs> answer exactly why. I guess uh, any, any certification body wants to be maybe different and special and uh, because it would make sense, like make uh, make a deal with Red Hat, and so you know you have our certification, so you don't have to. But it's a question of maybe you know everyone wants the, the, its individuality, I guess. It's marketing and politics, but uh, then it helps the community uh, not just lock themselves into one certification ecosystem, invest time and money, growing in it but uh, be able to move between that's what I'm asking, like if you plan any of those up ahead. By the way, kudos on the development process, probably the, the only open source certification development process that I've seen so far. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, 
Thank you. Yeah, yeah but I, I, ho I, I hope I could answer your question. I'm not sure why, but it would, would make sense for the community for sure. But it's maybe everyone, it's difficult to get uh, all together and, you know, okay, so I do this, you do this, because we are different bodies. We don't have the you know, same, same board of directors. So I think it's more this than other thing. Do we have any other questions? Okay. Oh, I still will be there. I think uh, at five o'clock. Yeah, six we have a speaker's corner. Um, you, you probably could meet yeah. there, and uh, I will be there, and I will be there tomorrow. So if you uh, have any particular questions, you know, just you can just visit me. Okay. And yeah, we have il uh, tomorrow 11:15 uh, Linux in a nutshell. It's a workshop provided by one of our partners and volunteer here, Dimitar. Uh, so, yeah, he will show a little bit uh, what the Linux Essentials uh, exam is about, but like show with some examples, okay, on machines. Yes? Um, I can sit here. Can you speak to the phone? I'm sorry. No. At least for the recording. So, be interesting for me. Um, for your exams, are they, do we need to go to a testing center or I can do it online or did you maybe change it during pandemic? Uh, during pandemic, um, the, the exam provider changed, yeah. Um, it, all the exams are, can be taken at Pearson View. So Pearson View works with all exam providers, Cisco, Microsoft, all of them. So they have centers, like you can go there and take there. <clears throat> but during pandemic, they launched online version. So since the pandemic, you can take Pearson View online. We, as LPI, we do not have our own platform yet. I cannot tell much more, but yes. And did you maybe encounter that m during the pandemic that more people started to get to certifications as mm. before? Uh, yes or no, just different people. No, because uh, there were no trainings, like in-class trainings. So it took months, mm, several months, to, for them to build trainings online. Or, or when they did and started to train online, so yes, it increased. But the first part of the pandemic, probably it was like nothing happened. And then uh, Pearson View launched on, online, and then yes, yes, it's it's a very because Pearson View it's okay, it's a good way. But uh, like in Sofia, there are I don't know almost ten centers. But imagine outside Sofia, maybe in you know Burgos and other cities, yes. But in small villages, no. In Poland, it happens the same. Sometimes people have to travel 200 kilometers to go to a to a center. So it's sometimes okay, it's good to have a certification, but if I have to travel and I pay for it, I go back, I, I have to one day, to lose one day at work. So they, they just didn't do this. Now online is a very good solution actually. And it's mostly for people not living in, in big cities. Thank you very much. Oh, welcome. <coughs> uh, which distro do you use yourself? No, I cannot tell. <laughs> Sorry? I cannot tell. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>